Hi, this is Manos Prilakis and this is case 160 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of keeping calm and carrying on. The patient was a gentleman with previous coronary bypass, lima to LAD and vein graft to PDA. The vein graft he had been occluded. He presented with severe class 4 angina, despite high doses of Imdur, Metoprolol and Rolonazin. He did have two failed attempts for percutaneous coronary intervention of the right coronary artery CTO. He also had atrial fibrillation on warfarin, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and he was obese with a BMI of 40.5. He was sent for a third attempt for recanalizing the RCA CTO given the severe medically refractory symptoms. This is his coronary angiogram. He did have um, a CTO of uh, the right coronary artery with well-defined proximal camp, long length and uh, diffusely diseased distal vessel. He also had a septal branch with significant lesion. He actually underwent PCI of that branch with uh, a drug eluting stand, but that did not help with resolve his symptoms. And then three months ago, that was the most uh, recent attempt for recanalizing the RCA. It was done through undergrade um, wire escalation, but it was not possible to enter into the distal trulumen. The patient presented now and the recently placed stand in the lady he had occluded. Once again, we have a well-defined proximal cap. There is long occlusion length with severe calcification. The patient did have septal collaterals feeding the PDA and the distal vessel was diffusely diseased. Given the previous failed attempts and the small diffusely diseased distal vessel, we decided to go with the retrograde first approach, followed by undergrade escalation and um, undergrade dissection reentry if retrograde failed. You can see the patient did have a nice septal collaterals, which also facilitated the decision for going with the primary retrograde approach. We started with uh, a SUO03 guide wire doing surfing and uh, the SUO3 was uh, actually successful in uh, crossing into the distal trulumen following a tortuous course that went uh, a little further down towards the apex and then uh, successfully crossed into the distal trulumen. However, unfortunately, even after the wire was sent to the mid-right coronary artery, we were not able to advance any microcatheter through it. Here's the confirmation of the distal trulumen position. So after multiple attempts to deliver a microcatheter, we did use a guide extension. We did change for a care of microcatheter, but despite that, we were not able to cross through. So we decided to change our approach and we served through another part of this collateral and we were able with the filter XTR to once again enter into the distal trulumen as confirmed by left injection. We then were able to advance the Caravel microcatheter all the way to the distal cap. It took some time, but we were able to slowly get it through. This time we did not have the difficulty of uh, advancing the microcatheter as had happened through the initially crossed collateral. We then did a tip injection, which can be very useful for visualizing the distal portion of the vessel. And we saw that there was a bifurcation of the distal cap. There was no proximal vessel extension, and there is also severe calcification in the distal right coronary artery. At this point, we did have difficulty with uh, retrograde wire advancement. That is why we tried to go undergrade with um, a polymer jacket. This is a Mongo, Gladius Mongo wire that went into the side branch, but eventually um, did go a little more distal into the uh, right coronary artery course. But then it appears to be on the subintimal, on the subintimal space. Using this undergrade wire as a marker, we use a Gaia X to create an entry point and then another Gladius Mongo going retrograde that nicely knuckle and now it is advancing along the course of the vessel that is demarcated by the undergrade guide wire. We could not advance anything through the proximal cap, there was severe calcium, so we eventually used a Subfire 1.0 by 15mm balloon that successfully went through and predilated the proximal portion of the lesion. There was significant anterior expansion of balloons into the mid-right coronary artery. However, after multiple high-pressure inflations, we were able to expand a little better in the mid-RCA. We also had an undergrade guide extension that was advanced to um, the proximal part of the vessel 
and we were then able to advance the retrograde gladius mongo wire all the way into the undergrade chiral catheter. We externalized an R350 and then performed balloon dilatations. Now we do have a stent or balloon under expansion in the proximal right coronary artery. But we did restore undergrade flow into the PDA as well as the posterior lateral. So we found there's major branches, the PLV and a second branch that were important. So we decided to try to wire them first before placing any stents to minimize the risk of occluding those branches. Eventually, with high pressure inflations, we were able to dilate the proximal right coronary artery. And then we used a dual lumen microcatheter. This is a Sasuki microcatheter that was used in an attempt to advance a guide wire into the right posterior lateral vessel. And that was challenging. Um, there was a second posterior lateral in a way, but then by moving the Sasuki microcatheter further back and probing, we were eventually able to advance the wire into the right posterior lateral. We were planning to stand at this point. However, another injection demonstrated that we had a significant lesion on the PDA just distal to the touchdown of that septal collateral vessel. So instead of standing, we decided to first convert it to an undergrade system. We used once again the Sasuki microcatheter to wire undergrade. And now we do have uh, an undergrade system with wires in the PDA, PLV, and another branch. Unfortunately, the patient had also a balloon undilatable posterior descending artery. Even after going up to 28, 30 atmospheres with a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon, we were actually unable to dilate this lesion. As a result, we decided to do a therectomy, but there was not much room for the flex tip viper wire to go down. So in a way to avoid this or prevent this, we were able to advance um, a workhorse wire essentially into another more distal septal. And then after doing that, we were able to advance the flex tip viper wire all the way in the septal so that the distal thicker portion of the wire is actually not into the PDA. So here we're now, this is the flex tip viper, but now we have enough of a zone, of a landing zone, for treating with orbital atherectomy, which is exactly what we did. After atherectomy, the balloon now expands, and it is time to place stents. So we have a good result so far with expansion of both uh, the PDA as well as the right coronary artery. We placed a long resolute onyx stand all the way from the PDA to the distal right coronary artery, jailing the wire in the posterior lateral. That stand expanded well. However, there was some pinching of the ostium of the right posterior lateral. So the next step was to rewire into the posterior lateral, which was done using the Sasuki microcatheter. And after doing that, we were able to do a kissing balloon inflation with uh, balloons in both the posterior lateral and the PDA. This uh, provided nice result with patent flow in both vessels. And then we placed uh, additional stents all the way from the distal RCA to the RCA ostium. This uh, provided a nice result after multiple post dilatations with Timothy flow into the RCA as well as the posterior lateral. And this is the final result. So we were able to recanalize the RCA without a complication and maintaining flow to all major branches. So the reason we call this keep calm and carry on is because of the multiple challenges that were encountered when performing this case. Uh, one fact that was not mentioned so far during the case is uh, that there was a miscommunication and actually the guide that was used for undergrade was the seven friends through radial instead of being the eight friends femoral that we had in place. And actually that created a problem because during wire exchanges, we actually lost wire position a couple times as the dual loom microcatheter was tight within the seven French guide. We had difficulty crossing the collateral with a microcatheter. The solution in our case was to use a different collateral. We had difficulty penetrating the distal cap that was done after advancing an undergrade subminimal wire and using a stiff wire initially followed by a knuckled mongo wire. We had an uncrossable proximal cap that was treated with a small balloon at Sapphire 1.0. We had an undilatable proximal cap that was also treated with high pressure balloon inflations. A bifurcation on the distal cap that was approached using a dual lumen microcatheter and wiring the side branches. Undilatable PDA that was treated with orbital atherectomy. 
side branch compromise after provisional standing that was treated with kissing balloon inflation, and finally a dilatable proximal RCA that required multiple high-pressure balloon inflations. The patient also had atrial fibrillation on warfarin, therefore he was discharged on warfarin as well as clopidogrel for anticoagulation. He did have a resolution of his symptoms and was able to resume his daily activities. So in summary, CTOs can be challenging procedures, multiple challenges can arise, and keeping calm through all of those challenges and systematically approaching them one by one can be the best way for achieving a final successful outcome. Thank you.